Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. All right, we're back. This is Think Tech Tech, tech Talks. Now, we're doing it at 3 o'clock because that's why we're doing it at 3 o'clock. <laughs> All right, and we have Cody Down. He's the CIO of HPU. We have Dominique Bouchang. She is the Campus Recreational Director of HPU. And we have the Esports Arena Manager, Reed Passatiempo, um, from, all from HPU. And our show today is about HPU. It's called Winning Big at the HPU Esports Arena. And today we're going to teach you about esports in Hawaii and elsewhere. And the tagline is, the first collegiate esports arena in the state of Hawaii opened in February. Wow. Yep. You guys must be excited. Tell yeah. me the level of excitement. <laughs> you first, Cody. Well, it's been a long time coming. We spent uh, a year plus getting it ready, and so me and my team, IT, work pretty closely with Dominique's uh, folks over in athletics and um, put a lot of effort into forming a team, getting them um, playing well, uh, working with sponsors and um, other locals in the community to help build the arena out. Um, and so uh, my guys especially spent so much extra time uh, researching the right equipment to use, figuring out the best configurations for the arena, um, ordering the equipment, trying to get the best deals we could, and then being creative with our audiovisual in the arena. Uh, so when it launched, we did a soft opening in November um, where we just opened the doors and let people kick, kick the tires. Uh, and then we did a full-blown launch in February where we had members of the community, our board of directors. Um, we had high school teams come and play. We had a, a mini tournament with four local high schools. Uh, so it was great. It was a lot of fun. And ever since then, we've just been trying to do more and more and keep it running. And, and um, I think we're all real happy with where it's at right now. Yeah. So, Dominique, your role in all of this? Um, so I am the supervisor advisor for our eSports team, which right now we have a team for League of Legends that plays in the um, Riot Games Campus Series. And we just finished our first season towards the bottom, but we're we're offering scholarships for the upcoming semester, and we're really excited to see where our team finishes next semester. So this is like real sports. I mean, you have <laughs> very teams, so. leagues, yes. you have winners and losers we and do. all that. Yeah. Yeah. We do. It's much more like real sports or traditional sports than people may think. Okay. Reed, what, what is uh, what is eSports and, and, and what is the arena? And then we're going to look at pictures, so you, know, <laughs> you better give us a good word picture right um, now. I think the easiest way to say it is eSports is competitive gaming. Um, it usually deals with multiplayer video games, so you're competing against possibly one, possibly five, possibly even ten other um, competitors around um, at the same time. And then as far as the arena itself, the arena gives them a place to come together to be able to play. It also gives them a facility where um, a lot of gamers, they don't usually get out of their house, let's just say, um, all that often. But the arena gives them a place to come where they can communicate together, work out strategies, build friendships, and just be able to communicate as a team. Yeah, okay. Well, let's take some pictures and, and sort of flesh this out a little bit. Um, why don't you describe the pictures, Cody, and we'll sort of get a handle on what it looks like. By the way, I have to precede this by saying I've been there, and it's really beautiful, and it's brand new, and it's right, yeah. got great equipment, you know. It's, it's like our studio in its own way. <laughs> All right, Cody, what we got? Uh, so this is a picture from our grand opening. Um, you'll see uh, we've got a lot of people there. There's a couple high schools, um, one on each side of, of the table there, Can Competing against each other. There's uh, five players on each team in League of Legends. And you can see that the TVs above there are, are broadcasting uh, the games that they're playing. Um, we have people around kind of watching. We also, you can't see it in this picture, but we have some seating, casual seating, so people can kind of sit back and watch the games. Uh, on that far wall, you'll see, um, I guess, four, four monitors there. And those are our console machines. So we have Xbox, PlayStation, Wii, Switch. Uh, is that it? Yeah. We, so we have several different console yeah. machines up there. Um, so you have two groups of them. I can see one group is here on the right, and then yeah. in the back, 
sort of around the corner there, yeah. around the other side yeah. of that so wall, there's a, you have another yeah, there's a bank, bank of them. Right, now. there's a bank of 12 here, the slightly higher end systems, and then around the corner there's another bank of 12. And then we have, like I said, the four console stations in the back there. And then to the right in the corner there, we have a, a virtual reality station. It's a uh, HTC Vive. Mm -hmm. And then on the other corner, the left corner, you can't see it on this picture, but we have another VR system, and, and that's the Oculus Rift. Mm -hmm. So and this was this was uh, what I just your February opening or uh, before that. I mean, the people are obviously yeah. very engaged in what's going right. on. Uh, these are spectators came around. Yeah. Or, so uh, friends and family. Um, this is looks like Damien right here. We had Damien Roosevelt, St. Louis, and Marinal, Marinal uh, playing this little mini tournament. And so you have you have the players, their families, their friends are all there, plus members of the community, members of the HPU community that help build it. So let's see some more pictures. Okay, what's, oh, this is, I can see the game is on that big. Right. Uh, yeah, so this is a shot that. of just one of our console systems um, and some people playing there and other people watching. Yeah, where's the food? <laughs> <laughs> I know there's food there. Somewhere. There is food there now. At this point, there wasn't. Okay. Um, so right. we, do, we do sell food as a fundraiser up front. <laughs> okay. Uh, so these are just uh, random shots. Here you can see both sides, uh, the two teams competing against each other. Um, uh, sure, just, they all just look so intense. Here's our president on the left and mm -hmm. Dominique on the right there, mm -hmm. handing out um, our official esports jerseys to our team. So we have a, a A team, the varsity team, you could say, um, who all got these jerseys as part of the oh, opening ceremony. Treasured item, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's take a moment and ask Dominique. You know, how do these teams work? How do they work? I mean, we compete about against other colleges all around the country. And, um, you know, it's really nice because unlike other traditional sports, we can compete without traveling, which is a huge advantage mm -hmm. being here in Hawaii. Um, so we compete, there's brackets, there's regions, and we compete against each other and try to make it to the championships just like any other sport. Oh, wow. So you have a team, you have, or you have multiple teams at HPU, yeah? Uh, yeah, so we have two teams right now for League of Legends. We have an A team and a B team, and I hope as you know the arena grows, we'll have more teams and hopefully more competitive gaming and clubs that'll mm -hmm. come up. And so a club can also field a team. Yeah, so for example, you know, high school or another college, um, anywhere in the state, I suppose. Anybody, anybody can get down to your arena, I suppose. Absolutely. Can participate. So yeah. it's not just HPU's teams. No, yeah, we're, we're open to the community. Um, we, we encourage people to come down and check us out and play with, play with our team. Um, we have, we're open every day of the week, um, open late. So uh, we really want to be you know, part of the community. We want high school kids, junior high school kids, to come down there mm -hmm. with their teams, practice al alongside our team members. Um, you know, hopefully, eventually, they decide they might want to come to HPU. That would be great. Uh, if, not, if not, you know, I see the method now. <laughs> <laughs> if not, you know, we'll wish them well. But it's it's a good learning experience. And Dominique mm -hmm. might want to talk a little bit about you know how she's seen some of our players grow um, in, in in how they relate to each other and and how they lead teams. I mean, she's seen it a lot, and and so she may want to talk briefly about that sportsmanship, isn't yeah. it? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I saw tremendous strides in a few of our players from the very beginning when we started from a club from day one to you know now where they're in leadership roles and they're taking over rooms, they're talking mm -hmm. to cameras, they are at the head of you know this amazing, tremendous thing that HP has built. So they've handled it very well, and I've seen. You know, great strides in academics, taking school right? more seriously. There's a so relationship that, then, yeah, eh? Yeah, so that they can compete. We do have a minimum grade point average that they have to maintain. So, I mean, it's a, it's a balance, and I think it's definitely worked out for our players. It's very nice. Yeah, and when we come back on this, I, I'm going to ask you about the relationship between esports, okay, and jobs. We can talk about that too. Absolutely. But first, what is the esport? What does it look like? You know, read. We have we we have <laughs> access now to the way it's being played globally yes. on the internet right now. Uh, what's the name of the game? How is it played? What do I need to know and learn and do? How how is my hand-eye coordination <laughs> playing all of that? So let's let's put that on the screen and you can describe how this game or games work. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look. What do we have here? 
All right, so right now we have a game being played. This is live, by the way. Um, the streamer's name in the bottom, or kind of mid-left corner there, his name is Ninja, all right, that's his gamer name at least. Um, and he streams every day, and right now he's playing a game called Fortnite. Um, it's a first-person, or more like a third-person shooter type game. Um, it's probably the most popular game on the market right now. Um, he gets approximately about 300,000 plus viewers a day. Um, and so what he does is he commentates his gameplay while he's playing it. Um, and there is an entire business just by streaming games. There's an entire business of just mo uh, commentating on the games, which is called shoutcasting. Um, and so this has definitely opened up a, a whole new field of business um, and just allowing this group of gamers that who, who knows, at one point it just seemed like for fun, an actual career, something that can lead into something even greater, yeah? Yeah. Um, now, what's with that did column of things over on the right? That's the chat, eh? Yes. The comments so, you mentioned? Correct. So everybody who is wa watching this streamer right now has the ability to comment on the stream. He just won, and everybody's giving him cheers right now. Um, and they also have the ability to donate to him as well. And so... Um, Spectating a video game is actually a huge part of esports itself. Not only it's just the players, audience, it's correct. the crowd. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And the players like to have that. Right. Like, I mean, sure it was a football game feedback. without an audience, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, okay. Exactly the same. So there are multiple games. This is only one of them. This yeah. is just one. <clears throat> now, if you, you put all those consoles in in play, mm -hmm. they're all going to be playing the same game at the same time, right? Correct. So how do I know what game is being played at what time? <laughs> how do I prepare, you know, to play the right game when you're competing on that game? So I think the easiest way to look at it is the different types of games in esports can just be looked at as like different sports, right? You're going to prepare for football, you're going to prepare for basketball in that way. Same thing with esports. You're going to look at a game like League of Legends and you'll prepare as a team of five or six people. Um, you, you strategize together, you work out plans like that. Whereas in like Fortnite, for example, it's a one-player game, in which case you're more looking at um, self-building, right? You're looking at, okay, what can I do to outsmart my opponent one-on-one, -on -one, head to head, that type of thing. Um, but that's a bit of esports. There's so many different avenues, so many different varieties. Um, you know, the the so what, what do you have to been. have to play this game? Do I have to have a hand-eye co coordination? Do I have to be smart? <laughs> do I have to be quick? Um, do I have to? Um, well, what do I? What talents and skills do I have to have or develop to play effectively? Well, if you're talking about just playing a video game, yeah. then you can take anything. Um, and I think that's where video games is evolving into. doesn't matter what your skill sets are. If you are good at hand-eye coordination, there's games that you can thrive on. There's games that you like to maybe dance. There's games that keep track of your dancing movements. Um, VR is very... Um, I guess self-explanatory, right? So like if you're a farmer or something in the VR, you you know how to dig up grass or whatever maybe. <laughs> Whereas if you're a fighter in VR, right, you know you can throw some punches here and there. Um, and so that's the thing. You know, video games gives you um, a sense of being whatever you want to be, gives you that ability yeah. to do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, and so the skill set is all dependent on that. Yeah. Um, how young do I have to be? In other words, um, can a person who is over 22 uh, play the game? Can Cody actually play the game over here. He uh, tries. He tries. <laughs> he does. <laughs> uh, and again, I, I think that goes back to, you know, just it being for everybody. Um, they have games for young children. They have games for older individuals. And they have games that um, are not even that involved. You can even have, you know, strategy games. Things like um, even crosswords and things are going digital as well. So you can consider those yeah. video games as well at this point. Uh, pretty exciting. So um, what's the demographic? Graphic of people who actually use these games. Uh, are they all young? I mean, there are people in their 70s, 80s, 90s, hundreds. Do, uh, actually, do they do it too? Well, uh, you know, who, who's, who's involved? You know, we're talking 300,000 people online here. Who is it? I think that's mostly the younger generation. I would, I would say that, I mean, we always joke that, um, you know, by the time these, these players get to the college age, when they join our team, it's the senior league. 
and there's their retirement. You know, they've already made it when they were 16 or, or 13, right? Um, those are the age groups where these these kids really really thrive. Um, not to say that people don't play, you know, up into their 50s or 60s, which they do. Um, I, I play games still every day, um, not competitively like these guys, but just for fun. You know, my kids started playing games when they were, you know, four or five. And can and you so be can you be too much a player? Can if you know if 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 my kid is playing at two o'clock in the morning, do I have a problem? Uh, it depends. Yeah, <laughs> it may. I mean, if they're making a few million dollars a year, maybe not. <laughs> then you can play all they want. Yeah, uh, but yeah, there, you have to show some restraint, you know, and and just you know use your best better judgment on on how long to play. Yeah. I mean, it's just the same with parenting with anything else, right? Yeah. Speaking of restraint, we're going to restrain ourselves for one minute. We take a short break, and when we come back, Monique is going to tell us. Dominique is going to tell us all about the money. We're going we're gonna to hear about jobs. We're going to hear about these incredible money things that happen around these games. We'll be right back. Oh, stay tuned. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, your host on Pacific Partnerships in Education here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every other week, Tuesdays at 3 p.m., we have guests on and talk about the fascinating, interesting, and unique partnerships in education that occur across the Pacific Islands with Hawaii, Micronesia, the Marshall Islands, Palau, Guam, all these places have really rich local education programs going on, and the exchange among and between these programs is a wealth of great information, helping the islands all learn how to survive and thrive in our ever-changing world. I hope you'll join us on Pacific Partnerships in Education. I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. You know, George Santayana said, you know, if you don't study history, you're, gonna, you're doomed to repeat it. And we have that history professor. It was wonderful to have him, uh, John David and HPU. And we do this thing, uh, History Lens. We see the world through history. Very important, critical to understand our world around us. We do this on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. whenever we can get him. Right. John, what would you add to right, that? Right, Jay. Just tune in, folks, because we're talking about incredibly important issues. And we're projecting backwards into history, looking through the lens of history to add to our knowledge about these very important current issues like uh, white supremacy, trade and tariffs, uh, uh, impeachment, all of these uh, important issues that we've been addressing on this show. Yeah, it, all, it runs all the way from, from terrifying tariffs <laughs> To <laughs> historical right. history, John David. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, John. <laughs> I hope you noticed that was Professor John David Ann, history of HPU. <laughs> we are surrounded virtually, virtually is important <laughs> word, with HPU. Okay, Dominique, I, I promised to ask you about the money. So can you tell us what, what, what the money is on all this? This is not without financial implications. Talk about it. Um, well, esports is just blowing up. I mean, there are companies with many opportunities for young people graduating. If you look at Riot Games, they're, um, they're just a huge company to work for, and I think that's tremendous for somebody, you know, graduating college and getting a degree and a job and interest that, you know, is going to pay off, and, you know, they're giving great salaries, so why not? I mean, plus there's tremendous scholarship opportunities now, and, uh, I mean, all of these skills that they're learning in esports are just resume boosters, and the leadership roles that they're in and developing are only going to be. And the team play, the teamwork, and right. all that. Yeah, that's absolutely. part of it. Correct. That's actually executive training in its yeah. own way. It is. And that's leadership. what employers are looking for. So, I mean, it's kind of endless, really. It's kind of yeah. the future. Yeah. For our generation. Well, talking before about you know the the kinds of things that Cody was describing in terms of you know what the all of you have been describing what term the, what you do in these games the kinds of skills you have to have the kinds of challenges you're presented with uh, the kind of collaborative effort you have to make um, these to me the, these suggest they would be useful for the government uh, for you know national security for homeland security uh, for various government agencies that are concerned with, um, you know, military type software and all that. Um, but but you also told me that some of these guys who play these games make much more money <laughs> yeah. than you would ever make in the yeah. government. That's true. So as a career pattern, you know, if I'm chasing that, um, what's my best career track on it? 
what do I look at first and how do I get there and what do I say in my, my curriculum vitae about my gaming experience in order to get there? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's kind of the same as looking at any other traditional sport. I mean, if you're after becoming a professional soccer player and you want to play in the World Cup, I mean, how many of those guys are there? There's just a handful. Whereas, you know, you develop coaches and, you know, at athletic administration, other jobs and avenues that they can take. It's, that's just like esports and what they're developing. I mean, you could take a game designer, you know, somebody that's going to build a game, create oh, a game. Programming, coding. Correct, oh, correct. Oh, yeah, absolutely. A whole new idea, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. and um, a, lot of our, a lot of our players are all very tech savvy. I can see them going in multiple different directions. Mm -hmm. um, our captain right now wants to be an astronaut and is making strides to do that. And I think esports and gaming and the camaraderie and the community that we are building in the arena is, is helping him to you know, mm -hmm. go down that career path, which is very exciting. Yeah, it really is exciting. So Cody, and how did the university come to this idea? Is it because you know the students approached the university and said, we, we must have this? Is it because the university decided that there was a, a kind of movement going on with 300,000 people online all the yeah. time? Um, is it, why, why is it? Well, it, it all started uh, from an idea uh, from our president, actually, mm -hmm. Who, who friends of his and, and colleagues have told him that you know this esports thing is the next big thing. You've you've got to get on board with it. With it, it's a multi-billion-dollar industry. It's just growing like crazy. Especially, it's really starting to grow in the collegiate levels, university levels, and so he across the country, across the country, across the world. So uh, he took that uh, he took that advice and he called me up and he said, Cody, what do you know about esports? And I thought, I don't know anything. What is it? He really? Goes, well, he, goes, he goes, well, Wait a minute, you're the CIO. <laughs> but I, you know, I, at the time, I, you know, I didn't know much about the competitive gaming scene, right? Um, so I, I looked into it and, and got back to him, and he said, you know, this, I think this is something we got to build. So let's find a way to build it. And so I worked with um, in different vendors around. Uh, we had some donations from some key individuals that gave us enough funding to do the initial build out. Uh, like I said, a lot of people on my team worked very hard to try to get good deals on equipment and set it up properly. Um, a lot of expertise from Reed and others who helped us design the arena in a way that would fit in a competitive environment. And so we, we took all that and, and we, we, also, we also looked at it as this is something for our students, right? We'll build this for our students. It's a, it's a place that they can come, they can game, they can, it's casual, they can have friends, like Dominique was saying. You know, they can. It's right there at a Right, tower. they can build relationships. A few steps away. So there's that part of it. There's the team part of it, which is uh, the competitive side, forming a team, being a leader, you know, winning and losing, and all that goes along with that. So that's a great new sport for some kids that may not be interested in some of the other traditional sports. So it's another option for them. And then we're also looking at, you know, another pillar, I guess, of what we're trying to build there is, is the academic side. Mm -hmm. um, so as we build the arena, now we have the opportunity to attract uh, faculty who want to use the arena to teach their courses, to, to have symposiums, to do summer uh, classes on game design. Um, we're actually holding a summer camp this summer, which is going to be for kids 13 and up. And it will be will involve gaming, uh, some game design, some some shout casting, which we saw earlier, mm -hmm. um, some lectures from from different mm -hmm. faculty from both UH and HPU. Uh, so all these things. So you get an academic spin on esports as well as the gameplay. So it'll be a great thing, great experience for kids. They'll get both the academic side and the esports side. So actually, I, um, I, there's a relationship between gaming, esports. And my, my grade point average, uh, because if it if it helps me in a credit course, then obviously that's going to help my my grade point right. average. Yeah. Uh, but but I don't get. Do I get points um, for winning? Do I get points for winning an international tournament, uh, or is that is that sports without without credit? Well, you get you get ranking, so you get a higher ranking depending on you know what sport or what game you're playing. Yes. So the more you win, the better it is, right? Um, but not for credit. Not for credit at HPU. But what we are offering uh, for this first summer camp is a, a certificate of you know mm -hmm. completion for uh -huh. an esports camp. In the future, um, if this is successful, we ho hope to hold 
um, uh, longer camps where we will offer HPU credit. Mm -hmm. So you go to camp, you learn all these skills, and then you come away with some college so credit. A syllabus, a, a curriculum is yeah. taught. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, so so there's that piece of it. We're also looking at game design programs um, in the future where we'll teach down there, teach students how to design games. They can test their games on those computers. Okay, so let me ask you about the future. Right now, you probably have what a couple thousand feet involved in the in the in the sports arena. Three thousand. Three thousand. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Um, where is it going? Is it going to get bigger? Can I come back in five years and find out that it's five times the size? <laughs> uh, what, you know, are you going to have more yeah. food? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the first, I guess, I, we're in maybe phase two right now. I mean, the first phase, we wanted to build it up, get our students in there, start using it. Now we're trying to build it as, as a business to help sustain the operations of it um, because it's expensive to afford, uh, you know, the, the bandwidth down there, all the computing systems, the software upgrades, hardware upgrades, all that kind of stuff costs money. And so we want to keep it as affordable as we can for everybody. So, so we're, treat it as a business. Yeah, so we're running it as a business to, to raise some money where we can to help support the operations. Hopefully, uh, if we do well at that, we can expand. We have 24 high-end gaming systems. I'd like to move that to 48. We have room in that facility to add another two mm -hmm. rows in there, bring that up to 48. Mm -hmm. um, add maybe a few more console stations and maybe another VR station. Mm -hmm. I think right then we'd be pretty full in that arena. Yeah, I want to come down and uh, actually yeah. videotape how it works and we'll make an OC16 show out okay. of that. Yeah, be great. Month. So on the future, Dominique, uh, may I ask you about the future of this as a, as a national and international sport? I mean, it's, it's, it's really gone great guns in the past, what, year or two, but yeah. where's it going in the next five years? Give me a plan. Um, well, HP is going to win the championship. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's all settled. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Um, you know, my what I feel is going to happen is NCAA eventually is going to sanction this as mm. a sport, and there won't be as many gray areas as there are right now. There'll be a lot more in black and white, and I really think that this is, this is going to take a hold and it's going to be the future of sports. Yeah. How about the Olympics? Yeah. There's already t discussion about having virtual reality in the Olympics. So absolutely, I don't, wow. I don't see why not. Wow, wow. Anything's possible. Okay, I have my future question for you too, Reed. <laughs> oh, no, here we go. Okay, because you, 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 you strike me as a kind of person who is into, you know, the interstices of these games, the programming logic of these games, <laughs> the code of these games. You're calling me a nerd, sir. <laughs> Indeed I am. <laughs> In the nicest possible way. Fair enough. <laughs> but where are they going? You know, it looks pretty sophisticated what we saw on the screen. Yes. Way more sophisticated than it was five or ten years ago. Mm -hmm. But where are they going in the next five or ten years? Oh, five or ten years, it, that's a long time when you're looking at technology, to be completely honest. Um, we jumped from just 2D video games to 3D video games. We have VR, we have augmented reality, and that's all within less than 10 years, that all of these jumps, yeah? So asking me what it is gonna be in five or 10 years, it's really hard for me to say. Now, I'm not trying to dodge the question, though. Um, so I asked our last guest <laughs> what was gonna happen in North Korea in the next five years. You can imagine the struggle he had with that question. Right. <laughs> Um, no, but uh, realistically, we definitely see a growth in education um, and just connecting the two between video games, education, and then, of course, careers. Um, you know, right now, esports is its own, like, business itself. It's an industry. Um, but it's going to definitely expand just because we can incorporate it in almost anything. Yeah. Um, you know, in school nowadays, kids are learning just how to type, you know, at age five, age six. And by then, they can already play video games. They've already had a Game Boy or some Nintendo Switch or something in their hand by that age. Basically. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. So if, if in your af after hours, you know, you play a little bit. Right. And uh, just suppose you win one of the big pools, you're like, say, four, <laughs> 4.5 million. Will, will you share that with Dominique and uh, also Cody? Uh, are you talking about me? <laughs> oh, well, uh, uh, we're on camera, so I can't really say that because I don't want to be bound to anything. No. Um, of course. I mean, I don't, I don't see me being a professional uh, gamer, at least at that level. Um, if I ever get there, it would be a blessing. So for sure, I would love to. Okay. Well, share. we'd like you to come back, all of you come back and do more with us on this, whether or not you win big. It's Fair. okay either way. <laughs> so the last question is how much of what Cody said do you read and Dominique do you agree with 
I don't think he said anything I don't agree with. Um, 100%. Yeah. Mind, always. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. Okay. I think I think it's good. Yeah. I think it's good. <laughs> Thank you, Cody. Yeah. Thank you, Dominique. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great no to problem. have you here. Nice to have you. We'll do it again. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having us. All right. Aloha to you guys. Thank you.